Good morning. Uh, good morning. We're going to go ahead and call our meeting to order of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. And please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. We'll now move on to roll call. Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Sigerbloom. Here. Commissioner Larry Blackman. Here. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Commi Commissioner Richard Churchio. Present. Commissioner Carrie Cox. Commissioner Michael Disman. Commissioner Luciana Turner. Present. A quorum is present. This meeting has been properly noticed and we are in compliance with the Nevada opening, open meeting law. Thank you so much. We'll now move on to public comment. This is a time set aside to discuss items that are on the agenda. <laughs> if you choose to come forward at this time, we ask that you say your name for the record and as well as uh, the um, residents and your comments will be limited to three minutes. 52, or it's Phyllis Carpenter, 5200 Alpine Place, number five. Um, in April, I put in a request to get the agendas the same time, the same day that you guys get them with the backup information. I've only twice received it. So, like, walking in right now, I don't even know what's on the agenda. And it's, it, it, it's in the Nevada in, NRSs as well as it, in the CFRs that if it's requested that you have to give it for six months and it hasn't been given. Uh, thank you. Um, would the secretary confirm that the agenda is, has been properly noticed? Yes. Not to me. It has been to me. Okay, thank you. Um, just want to confirm for the record that the agenda was properly noticed and sent out in the appropriate amount of time. Uh, we'll now move on to item number three, approval of the minutes of our August 15, 2024 meeting. I entertain a motion. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Turner, uh, second by Vice Chair Sagerblum. Is there any discussion on the motion for approval? Hanger and saying no, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any, anyone opposed? Aye. Is that Commissioner Bruni? It is. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, let the record reflect that Commissioner Bruni is present online. Uh, anyone abstain or anyone opposed? Motion is adopted, minutes are approved. We're now moving to item number four, the approval of the agenda. We have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerblum. Is there a second by Commissioner Churchio? Is there any discussion on the motion? There is discussion, Mr. Chair. We like to move uh, number four, um, four, move item 11 and 13 to go behind item eight. 11, 12, 11 through 13, 11, 12, and 13. All Thank right, uh, is there uh, any, any problems with that? Good. All right. Uh, we will approve the agenda with the uh, change that items eight through thir 11 through 13 will be included after item number eight. That's All great. in favor? Aye. Any, Aye. 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 any abstentions? Anyone opposed? The agenda is approved and we'll now move on to section two, item number five, to receive a report from our executive director, Louis Jordan. Good afternoon, all. A couple things I wanted to report out on since we last met. Uh, met. Clearly, as we continue to build our strong team, we have to bring in new players to uh, work with us. And I have the pleasure of introducing some of our new team members that have recently joined since our last meeting. And I'll just have them stand up when I call their names. Uh, our new IT director, director Dino Enriquez. Dino, are you here? Dino's in the back there. Uh, our new human resource director, Angela White. And, you know, we all know we got the CNI grant, and that grant allowed us to have someone who's responsible for the implementation. And uh, I'd like to introduce the CNI implementation director, Karen Schnog. So these are just give us our latest members of the team a hand. Um, always approaching our work inside and out. We, we do housing, but we also do programming as well. Um, we, we had a very, very successful summer meal program this year. 
and uh, Johanna Belu is here to just give some brief updates on, just talk a little bit about the summer program, the summer food program. I'm going to have Johanna come up. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Johanna Bellew. I am the Ross coordinator here for Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. So I um, provide supportive services to nine public housing uh, sites, which include Marble Manor, Marble Manor Annex, Sherman Garden, Sherman Garden Annex, Villa Capri, um, Simmons, Simmons Manor, Ernie Cragen, Hampton Court, and Jones Gardens. So um, this summer, I collaborated with uh, Three Squares uh, to bring an on-site food services for the youth and children that are currently living in public housing. Um, the goal of the program was to ensure that during the summer months when school is out, um, we would, uh, and they don't have regular access to meals, that Sonara would help meet the food needs and also provide some relief to parents having difficulties feeding um, their families during the summer. So the program began uh, June 3rd and ended August 9th. Youth were able to come to the community centers Monday through Thursday, um, eat their meals on site. While they're in the community centers, they were able to read books, um, take books home, cool off, um, play games, um, and just enjoy their meals um, inside the community center. Um, the Ross program was able to provide 1,060 summer meals um, to the following sites, which was Marble Manor, Marble Manor Annex, Sherman Garden, Sherman Garden Annex, Villa Capri, um, Simmons Manor, and Hampton Court. I continue to work with Three Squares to discuss other summer meal programs that we are able to offer throughout the school year. Um, and my goal is also to help bring the summer meal program back this next summer. Thank you. Thank you so much for that update. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. At our last meeting, Commissioner Turner asked for an update on the uh, NDOT, and I'm going to have Frank come up and talk a little bit about what's going on with that. Frank is here. Yeah. Good afternoon. Frank Stafford, Director of Development and Modernization. We spoke with representatives from NDOT last week, and the uh, NDOT, this is the, uh, the uh, project that will eventually widen uh, I-15, I mean I-515. Uh, uh, currently, they're still in the process of the environmental review. That process will not end until 2026. Uh, at that point, we should know which option they will select. However, the uh, construction time frame, which originally scheduled for 2029, that will be pushed back to 2031. So there will still be a little time before uh, that happens, but the first step is to complete the environmental review, which is still a 2026 time frame. Thank you. Are there any questions right. from members of the board? Good. Thank you for the update. Very good. Just a few more things. In, in the spirit, again, of having a strong team and having people just be at different things because we all can't be at the same, t at the same place, I wanted to acknowledge both staff and board members who showed up at different events over the last month to represent us, starting with the, um, the groundbreaking of the Blind Center. I, got to, I think a few of the board members were there as well as staff. Um, Paula Tucker and I went to Philadelphia to learn more about the $3 million Jobs Plus program. And we had a very, very good two, two and a half day of meeting. Um, I did the DC fly-in. The DC fly-in is where civic, business, uh, and government leaders, uh, this year we had 300 people go to Washington, D.C. and meet with our legislators our, um, and, uh, and other um, individuals in, 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 in Washington. And as I learn more about it, it, it's the purpose of this trip is to show the world, show the United States that Vegas is a, we're, we're a community. We're not a, just a place to go and gamble and have fun, but a thriving business community that attracts um, that attracts various uh, agendas, attracts sports events. But again, we're, we're to be reckoned with. And I, I'll tell you, we had a really good time. 
I had an opportunity to sit on a panel and talk about affordable housing, looking for ways to collaborate with other business, um, businesses in the community so that we can grow our product. Uh, in addition, um, let's see, we did the DC Fly-In, Jobs Plus. Um, this week, a few commissioners and I and a few staff are going to NARO's annual conference, where again, we're looking to just learn more about the work that we do. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Director Jordan, and also, you know, thank you for re representing us at all, you know, all the different uh, spaces where we should be present, especially at the D.C. fly-in. That's a very important uh, trip, and it's good that the Housing Authority is represented yes. during that time, as well as uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, I got to say, uh, Kathy did a phenomenal job representing uh, the Housing Authority at Visions Park, groundbreaking, uh, just phenomenal. I just, you know, want to publicly thank her uh, for representing so well and uh, for our involvement in that project and helping it get over the, the hill. Uh, we'll now move on to, oh, and welcome all the new members. Uh, we're glad to have you, and uh, we look forward to working with you in your various capacities. And Karen, uh, I know the city has a little heartburn, but, uh, you know, welcome. We look forward to working with you in this new capacity as well. Uh, section 3. Is there anybody left at the city? Nobody's left. <laughs> The housing authority. And, and I wish I could promise I won't do this again, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, no, a key poacher from the city to have great talent over there. Well, at least there's job security here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, section three, consent agenda item number six. Uh, approval to request to write off outstanding tenant accounts, receivable and vacated accounts for the periods ending July 31st, 2024. I see we have Mr. Heron online. Uh, if the board needs a presentation uh, we can have you speak but I don't I'm not necessarily sure we do at this moment do we need no. all right we'll entertain a motion move for approval all right we have a right. motion by vice chair Sager Bloom is there a second all right we have a second by uh, Commissioner Blackman is there any discussion on the motion no I was just gonna make a comment oh here and seeing none uh, before we go to the vote we'll Director Jordan has a comment. I just wanted to show for the record that Mr. Heron is at home recovering and that um, that's why he isn't here. But I just wanted to let, let it be known for the record that he's dressed like he's sitting in the front row, but he, he is at home recovering from a procedure. So, All right, speedy recovery to you. And we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Item is approved. We'll now move on to section number four. Seven, acknowledgement of our departed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since why don't we have a moment of silence for the following individuals who've passed on since we last met. Uh, Pamela Howard, Maria Wilkie, Gregory Goldsmith, Yu Ramo, Teresa Randick, Rodney Butchie, Eula Sims III, Jessica Silas, Rochelle Chamberlain, Esther Blousley, Terry Parker, Johnny Giordano, and Diana Russell. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, will now move on to item number eight. Approval of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority's operation budget, operating budget for fiscal year ending September 30th, 2025. Mr. Heron. Good afternoon, Commissioners. How are you doing? Uh, this is Fred Heron, Chief Administrative Officer here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Um, as Mr. Jordan stated, you know, I am recuperating from hip replacement surgery. Um, I would be there in person, but my, um, my, my, my care taker told me that I would not be leaving the house for the first seven days. So I guess I'll be doing my job over, over the fall. Um, 2020, the Southern Nevada Reason is asking the board to approve our operating budgets for fiscal year 2025. Uh, this budget consists of all our conventional no rent program, affordable housing and section eight, neighborhood stabilization program budget as well as our agency grants. <clears throat> this budget covers all estimated receipts, operating receipts and expenditures along with non-routine expenditures. Upon your board approval, um, we would adopt this 2025 operating budget. Um, I'd like to go over some, some highlights of the 2025, but I met with the commissioners 
uh, this past week and a half to kind of discuss in a little more detail, but I wanted to kind of touch on some of the high levels um, of, of this particular budget. <clears throat> this particular budget um, is about $244 million for the uh, upcoming fiscal year. Uh, we anticipate utilizing all but 290000 uh, these expenditures set aside for operating expenditures to operate uh, program budgets that covers about 70 different program budgets, 21 public housing uh, properties, about 10 department budgets, uh, 25 affordable housing and NSP budgets, uh, five, five grants, and about eight um, RAD resident assistant demonstration project budgets uh, salaries. <clears throat> One of the highlights in the 2025 budget is um, stems from an RSP that, that we sent out, submitted, and, and, and received um, to overlay project-based project -based vouchers budgets for our affordable housing program. Um, <clears throat> this would generate about $2.1 million in our affordable housing program budget. Um, we anticipate overlaying about 292 um, budgets, I mean vouchers over our non-federal pro program. Also part of um, this operating budget, one of the highlights is, in that, and I won't elaborate on it too much because this White will talk a little bit about it in the upcoming agenda items, is we did um, come to an agreement with our collective bargaining agreement, uh, which was where we um, uh, uh, provide a, a cost of living increase of 5%, a merit increase of 25 and, percent and also an increase in our um, medical benefits to 65% 65 for, 65 for our family coverage, which would generate been about a little over $2 million. $2 million. <laughs> Some of the other um, items that this budget is going to cover we are asking the board to approve about two point, about one point eight million, one point six million dollars out of um, the affordable housing budget to cover um, program budget shortfalls for the public housing budget, which is going to generate, which is going to come to about one hundred fifty-six thousand dollars. The central office cost center budget is going to have a shortfall of about seven hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars, and the section eight housing choice voucher program budget would have a shortfall in the amount of six hundred sixty thousand dollars. Um, these funds will be covered by the additional money that's coming in from the affordable housing program. There also will be some new positions added to uh, the 2025 budget, a business, a business system analyst uh, that will be reporting to the COO of, officer, um, IT security officer, which would deal with all of our network, network security systems, and IT specialist, as well as a resident service program supervisor. Also included in this, in this operating budget for 2025 is about $1.1 million in paid salaries, paid salaries and in-kind salaries uh, for the CNI grant and the Job Plus grant. We will continue with operating our um, pre-apprenticeship program. We set, set aside $200,000 in the 2025 budget for the apprenticeship program. And we also will continue our landlord incentive program, which we will have set aside a $168,000 balance in the upcoming year. Currently, we spent about $90,000 out of uh, for our landlord incentive program. Um, if there's any questions, I would be able to answer any questions. If the board have any questions? Are there any questions? Commissioner Turner. Yes. Um, one of the, the, the things that I was curious about is um, now that we have the grant, um, is that just designated to help only the marble manor or um does that help us in balancing some of the other programs as well are you referring to the detroit neighborhood grant yes the cni grant now that, that grant is specifically for that development it doesn't have anything to do in terms of addressing any shortfalls in any other program budgets so now that we hired somebody to work with that, does that mean that those, um, should I say, incomes or anything related to, to the CNI grant and development, that would come out of those funds or would it come out of the funds that we have already laid aside for our agency? The person that we hired um, for the CNI grant, that money would come out directly out of the CNI grant. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Are there any other questions from members of the board? Hearing and saying none, I'll entertain a motion for approval. 
to approve. We have a motion. Aye. Motion, but uh, is, you have a comment, Commissioner Bruni? Uh. Comment, Commissioner Bruni? No, I jumped the gun, so I'll second the motion. Oh, okay, gotcha. We have a, a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum, a second by Commissioner Bruni. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Aye. Anyone opposed? The budget for the fiscal year 2025, year ending September 30, 2025, is approved unanimously. Um, we'll now move on to item number 11. Approval of the agreement extending the, uh, the current non-supervisory and supervisory CBA through September 30th, 2024. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My Angelo, I'm Angela White, the Director of Human Resources here at Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. I'm going to take you quickly through the article changes that we've tentatively agreed to with um, SEIU. So Article 1, changing the date of the agreement. Article 2. Um, the training regarding non-union and union employees will be done within 90 days. Article 3, just a language clarification that we will be meeting directly with the union. Article 4, um, SNRHA reserves the sole right to determine operational staffing needs. Also, temporary employees can apply for positions, but they will have to go through the full selection process. Article 5, employees can request electronic scanned copies rather than photocopies of documentation. 6, unions granted 7 stewards, 640 union release hours. Article 8, this is for the bulletin boards. Um, the designation will be me or a designee approving those. Article 9, LMC, will have 4 bargaining members meeting quarterly. Article 10 basically states that we'll be meeting within 45 days of ratification. Article 11, everyone will serve a six-month probationary period, and employees will have 16 days from leaving a position to return to their former position without a loss of seniority. Article 12, reclassifications won't change employee seniority dates. 13, coaching and counselings will be occurring before discipline. Article 14 says that coaching and counselling and oral writtens are not subject to grievances or arbitrations. And then as far as hearings, if the dispute or agreement involves the person who would have heard it at a step one, it will go to the next level. Article 15, regarding schedule changes for people working Tuesday through Friday on holiday weeks, they will revert to Monday through to Thursday. The LMC will meet to discuss the possibility of a remote work for employees. And employees experiencing a hardship and need a flexibility in schedule will now be able to request those through human resources. Article 40 is simply a change related to PERS language. Um, Article 41, 65% of pay for dependent group insurance and 100% for LTD, long-term disability, for those working 30 or more hours. Article 44, layoff recall. Employees must respond within eight work days. And then 48, just the terms of the agreement. Article 50, this is educational reimbursement must be related to an employee's position or relevancy to the agency. I apologize, mine printed on the back. The significant one is Article 21. As Mr. Heron was discussing, um, the COLA. We're looking at a 5% COLA for this first year of the agreement with an automatic merit of 2.5%. In 2025, it will be a 3% COLA that was agreed to, and that is gonna be a true pay for performance related situation. So um, the new tool to evaluate has going to be implemented. It's being implemented now. And in the performance rating, you can get zero, two and a half, or 5%. Um, and then 2026 is a two and a half percent merit, and then the same pay for performance. The pay for performance is basically scoring outstanding scores, four and a half to five. If you score that on the valuation overall, you'd be eligible for the 5% merit. If you score three to 4.4, that's beating the standards and satisfactory, you'd be eligible for the two and a half percent. And anything below that is not going to warrant um, getting a merit that year. Are there any specific questions about the other articles? Any questions from members of the board? All right, hearing saying nine. Any questions online? All no. Right. 
All right, uh, we'll entertain a motion for approval of the uh, agreement extending the current non-supervisor and supervisory CBA through September 30, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? We have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerblum. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is adopted unanimously, and we'll move on to item number 12. Approval of successor non-supervisory and supervisory CBA between Sonora and SEIU Local 1107, retroactive to September 1st, 2024. It's the same T8 articles, essentially. Um, we, will, we were holding over the other contract, and now this will go into effect retroactively to September 1st. I accidentally presented number 12 first. My apologies. No worries. Thank you. All right. Any questions? I was a little confused. I'm like, where is she? But I I'm got sorry. It. I'm very nervous. This is my first board That's meeting. That's okay. So I'm just confused on what's going to happen after September 30th, though. We're just approving that for 30 days. My apologies. Could you read the question? Say the question again. I'm just confused on what's going to happen after the September 30th. So number 11, since we didn't have an agreement in place, extended the current contract language. So people still had coverage. Okay. Number 12 is saying starting effective September 1st, which is when the last contract actually okay. ended, this new language will come into place. And for a correction, it's actually through September 1st, 2024, not 2004, as stated on the agenda. Okay. Yes. I'm like, that's a long time. I yes. saw that too. Oh, that was going to be my next question. So thank you. Okay. That's a good catch. Yes. Somebody would have been happy. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're entertaining a motion for approval of item number 12. There's a motion by Vice Chair Segerbloom with the correction that it is retroactive to September 1st, 2024. Yes. Uh, is there a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying none, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion is unanimously adopted, and we'll move to item number 13. Approval of the economic package for non-union employees retroactive to September 1st, 2024. Essentially, we would like to move forward with the same COLAs and merit program, pay for performance for the non-union employees as well. Okay. They might want to join the union. <laughs> uh, any discussion on that motion? All right. Here and seeing none. Oh, no motion. Is there a motion for approval? Move for approval. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum. Is there a second? Second. By Commissioner, um, by Commissioner Blackman. Is there any discussion on the motion? I do have a comment. Commissioner Turner. I just want to make sure you guys are happy so you can continue to do the great work that you guys have signed up for, okay? Mm -hmm. Well said. <laughs> Good. Well said. All right. All right. Uh, we have a motion and second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is unanimously adopted, and congratulations to our employees. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'd like to just make a comment. Um, I wanted to acknowledge and thank all of the individuals who participated in this process. Um, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with the, um, the union president, and uh, she too acknowledged the level of professionalism, um, the level of teamwork, and each side's ability to just work to come to a common ground. And so I, I wanted to extend my appreciation to um, all that sat at the bargaining table for a successful outcome. Ditto. Agreed. Thank you all so much. We'll now go back to item number nine, approval to renew all 20, fiscal year 2025 service contracts for SNAR. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Commissioners. Johnny B. Shaw, Procurement Manager. Uh, the background 
the following list of contracts for the FY 25 uh, fiscal year, uh, which commences on uh, October 1, 2025, through uh, September 30, sorry, October 1, 2024, through October, through November 30th, through September, I guess I'm a little nervous too, <laughs> through, through September 30th. Um, don't, don't act like it's your first time. <laughs> <laughs> September 30th, 2024, 2025, I'm sorry, is being brought to the board uh, for approval of the source of the eligible expenditure funds and services for each uh, contractor listed and included in the SNAR FY25 operating budgets that was just approved. Please note that the board is only approving la the last two columns, which is uh, column E and column F. Column E represents the current fiscal year uh, projected and, and proposed expenditures, and column F represents the total contract value of the uh, five-year span of, of any given contract. Action requested, the executive director is requesting the board of approval for all, not all, but uh, these uh, particular specific contracts that are over the executive director's $150,000 threshold of the FY25 service contract renewals for the contracts that are listed below. Any questions? Just wanted to make sure that um, in the document it says the background, it says service contracts for fiscal year 25, it says October 1st, 25 through November, uh, through September 30th, 14. That's why I was struggling. Yeah, yeah. That should be October 1, 24 through November 30, 25. Okay, let's make sure we have that correction. So uh, let the record reflect that is for October 1, 24 through November 30th, 25. 25, correct. September 30th, 25. Correct. All right, uh, I entertain a motion. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum. Is there a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We'll now move on to item number 10, approval to uh, approve the updated utility allowance schedule. Welcome. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners. My name is Ava Mitchell Crew. I'm the director of public housing operations. What I'm asking today is that the new schedule for the proposed 2025 utility allowances be approved. There are, there is a substantial change for some of the scattered site houses, and we did talk about that on our calls, and Kathy, Frank, and I are going to be meeting with a sustainability expert so that we can see how we can lower their costs. In addition to that, we have done this year alone, we do energy upgrades, and we've done them on seven houses this year. So there's a total of 386 scattered site houses and I'd say within the past four to five years we've done at least 25 energy upgrades. Yeah, some of those scattered sites are, you know, a lot of them are brick. Um, that we, that's going to be hard to make more ener energy efficient so I can anticipate, you know, understanding what we're going to do about that moving forward. Yeah, so what um, we did is we asked Nelrod to do what's a GP&A, and they go out and they look at the properties and see how we can improve them. So they've submitted the report and we're looking into it. All right, thank you. Uh, is there, are there any questions from members of the board at this time? Commissioner Brown? So this is to change the schedule dates that the residents receive the utility allowance? No, this is what the, the utility allowance will be okay. in 2025, yes. Okay. That's good, that's it, thank you. Oh, that's it, mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, I entertain a motion for approval of item number 10. Motion 
motion to approve. We have a motion by Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing and saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank any, you. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. We'll now move on to item number 14, approval of resolution number as SNARA 129 authorizing the executive director to enter into an agreement for the Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Kathy Thomas, Chief Housing Officer for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. As you recall, in 2021, the agency received a planning grant of $450,000 to start a process to uh, submit an implementation grant, which we uh, submitted uh, the following year and it was officially awarded to us. Uh, what's before you today are some administrative items that we are required to complete. So even though we got the formal notification that we got the $50 million Choice Neighborhood Initiative, we do have some administrative items to address. One of which is Resolution uh, 129, which uh, authorizes us to receive the grant. The second document is actually the grant agreement with HUD. Uh, the action we're asking of you today is to approve resolution uh, SNRHA-129, uh, which authorizes the chair to sign that resolution. And secondly, to authorize your executive director to sign the grant agreement with HUD so we can actually start drawing down the funds. Motion to approve. We have a motion by <laughs> Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Blackman. Is there any discussion on the motion? Let's get the money. Hearing and saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is approved and the resolution will be signed. Yes. We'll now move on to the final item on our agenda. Um, new business, section six. Is there anyone, Commissioner Turner? Yes, um, Sherry is, um, uh, some of our properties, um, I believe, um, I'm just curious because I heard a concern about uh, maybe global management and um, I'm not sure. I just had a question about it and um, they wanted to know who was responsible. Is it public housing? They didn't know who to address or global management. Is that our property? Do we manage it? How does that go along? So I'm just trying to see if that's um, um, H Street right there. I uh, forgot their name. Knight. It's like a group of three or four. Okay, we can follow, we'll, we'll, we'll follow yes. up. We'll, we'll follow up. So okay. glo yes. global management. Yeah, global. We'll follow up. Yes. We'll have a report for the briefings as well as we'll report out at the next board meeting. Thank you so much. Commissioner Brown? No. Oh, okay. I saw your mic on. All right. Uh, seeing that there is no more items coming forward, we'll now move on to our second period <clears throat> for public comment. Uh, I'm going to call you up. Uh, Phyllis Carpenter, and then uh, Lanika Carruthers will be next. Okay, Phyllis Carpenter, 5200 Alpine Place. Um, August 22nd, Frank and the moisture guy came out to the apartment, and he tested the entire apartment. He said it was 22% moisture throughout the apartment. And as he was walking out, he said if it was 30%, he would say there's definitely a leak. They said that they would return the following day at 12 o'clock. At about 12.22, I had to go to the bathroom, and <clears throat> apparently that's right when they came. I didn't hear the doorbell. Um, so about 12.30, I opened the door, and it, it, there was a tag on it. It left Thomas's phone number to call back. I called back Thomas. Um, he said I had to schedule with Frank. I didn't have Frank's number, so I emailed him. Um, I got no response. On the 9th, the HUD REACT inspectors came out, and um, when he tested the spot that I believe where the leak is, it came back 40% moisture. So they then in turn um, called out um, uh, the, the moisture people, the moisture guy again, and um, they said they called out a leak detector as well. So I should have known I was being okie doked when I seen two of them walk up because anytime there's two or more of them, I feel like that's when they try to okie doke me. And so 
They come in, they start doing the testing. He says it's 28% next to the toilet. Now, 28% and 30%, there's not that much of a difference, but whatever. So now I have Amber, I have Thomas, and I have Miss May in my living room, and I don't feel comfortable leaving them in my living room to walk around and see what the, what the moisture meeting, meter guy's doing. So then May asked me, um, I had some work orders that was due in July, or excuse me, that, I, that was on my inventory move-in sheet that I called in in July. Only one of those work orders was done. August, August 3rd, they was all closed out. So now May wants to know what work orders need to be done. I told her they're the same as before, but then the, now the moisture guy comes out and he goes, okay, I'm done testing. And, I, and he, told, he said that the largest number that the highest number that he got was in front of the bathroom door. So I said, okay, so how high was it? He said, okay, you have no leaks. I said, well, what about the spot in front of the door? He said, well, that's the highest I got, but he didn't tell me what percentage it was at. And then May had me sidetracked telling her what was going on with the apartment that they closed out the work orders for that I didn't, I didn't catch it. So then um, this, now it's about 11 o'clock, 11.30, the leak detector guys show up. They say they don't have the equipment. They'll have to be back later that day. They come back at 6.30. Um, they was authorized to do a hydro flush <coughs> as well as put the camera into the, into the drain. They said that there is a belly underneath the pipe and that they would need to break the concrete um, where my pocket door is and go in and fix the pipe because the pipe to the clean out is, is no good. So this is on a Thursday night. May didn't come back till Tuesday. She said Tuesday they would be out Tuesday morning to do that. So at about noon, I went over to the office and she said that she hadn't, um, she, she's just lied throughout this whole thing. She said that she would, that now they need a second opinion. And, um, and then after that, they came out because the line was still clogged. So she said she sent a, a vendor out. The vendor came out on, I believe it was Wednesday afternoon, said he cleaned out the line. The line still is clogged up. Um, then f Thursday morning, she tells me that, that they're going to come, that this morning that she'd schedule with me to put me somewhere while they fix it. And I'm like, well, why do I need to be put anywhere if, if you're not going in my house? Because she says they can do it from the outside. And she said, well, we're, somebody in the same um, area as your, your apartment has the same problem, so we're going to do them both at the same time. This is asinine. I mean, you guys move me out, move me in. I, I was out for a year. Uh, everything that I went through last year, the dead body apartment, the scars on my legs, it was, it, this is just too much. So what we're going to do now, uh, allowed you to go over an extra 60 seconds, another minute. I thank you, um, and I appreciate it. Thank you for showing up. So if you can just hang back, did you have, was there a request? No, just to fix it right, okay. I mean, how long does it take? Okay, so we can just hang tight and someone will follow up with you after the meeting. Um, Lanika Carruthers? Welcome. Uh, if you live in a public housing unit, oh, okay. I could just start. Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Lanika Carruthers. I stay at 7289 Golden Star Avenue. Um, I came here today because I have a bunch of housing problems. I should be at home in bed resting because I just fainted on um, Sunday. But if I don't come here to advocate for my family, no one else will. So the first thing I really have an issue with was my forged signature. You guys, we come here and ask for help, but you guys send us to people like Ava who do not help us. I have talked to Ava before about my signature being forged. She's just telling me, well, what do you want me to do about it? Just come sign it. My signature should not have been forged. If I have the money, I would have been to you guys to court, but I don't have the $5,000 that lawyers is asking up front. Next thing is when I got approved for a four bedroom house due to my back but it got to be on the ground level because I have back issues. But then, like I said, my kids have been sexually assaulted, so I also got approved for the five bedroom. They're telling me that the five bedroom is on a two story and now there's a bedroom downstairs. When I talked to, I think her name's Thomas, she told me that I would be able to move to the four bedroom, four unit, and whenever the five bedroom unit come available, I will move there. I just received a letter saying that due to my, I guess my back issues or something, I have to take the four bedroom. What about the five bedroom? If there's a bedroom downstairs, I should be able to take that bedroom downstairs. And it's crazy that there's only one five bedroom on scatter sites. Um, let me see. And then there was another issue when I came to um, the last board meeting in August. I was reading the public comics back in July. 
I am have reported my rent many of times that when I stopped working in the start, I was being charged over my rent. I have told him my case working back in 2017 and 18, I was told that my money was put back towards my rent. But when I went into the office this year and asked him about um, where did my money go to, they said that it never happened. So if I reported my income and you guys was taking my money, I want the money back. But I was told that it was put towards my rent. When I do go into the system, it does say like $400, $300 was added to my account. But that's it. And I just want to make sure everything I have paid for gets back to me. And that's it. Thank you so much for showing up today, and I hope you feel better. Um, and also hang tight so someone can follow up with you. Uh, Annette Walker. Welcome. My name is Annette Haynes Walker. I'm a direct descendant of Wesley Davis of the Davis Brothers Lumber Company. These are the original founders of Grambling State University. But my great grandfather started a company 121 years. And I would like for everyone in the audience to please Google the Davis Brothers Lumber Company, LTD, Limited Family Business of Ansley, Louisiana. This estate has been linked to what is called the Pandora Papers. I'm asking all of the audience and everyone who will hear this meeting to please go on YouTube and pull up Congress examines nearly $32 trillion hidden offshore Pandora Papers. 53 minutes into that video, you're going to hear a young lady by the name of Erica Hanacek who actually states there's a family with the main interest in a lumber company that tried to evade paying $200 million in taxes. I contacted Mrs. Hanacek and let her know our company was wrongfully stolen and this wealth has been hidden offshore. But even more importantly in that same hearing, you're going to see our Congressman, Mr. Stephen Harshford. He's the last speaker. You're going to hear where Mr. Harshford said in our district, our citizens cannot afford to be wealthy and not pay taxes. But you're going to hear Ms. Beverly Moran of Vanderbilt Law School said, Mr. Harshford, Nevada is at the top of the bottom for hiding the money. But I'm here to let everyone know, in 2015, the same building that Ms. Carpenter is talking about, I just want you to know, they condemned the building and the housing authority got money to relocate everybody and then refurbish the building, move everyone back. They didn't do that. In 2019, I was exposed to black mold and I want you to know the housing authority came and threw me out of my house. I'm still homeless. I won a lawsuit. I've been constantly calling Ms. Uh, Turley. They've never, ever, ever responded. And they didn't appear. So I won the lawsuit. They have not paid. And they have not responded. And of course, we have a long list of people who have died. And I have repeatedly called your office, and no one has responded. So we'll just ask, you know, you, you just wrap, wrap it up. Yes, sir, I will. The one thing I want more than anything in the world is for my name to be cleared. They even stole my great-grandfather's family Bible. They took my children baby books. I want everything that was wrongfully taken from me, public and written apology because they not only took everything from me, that I own everything. Thank you I'll, so much. Uh, um, OK, I'll, I will stay back as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And thank you for coming today. Um, is there anyone else that would like to come forward during this section for public comment?
First of all, I want to apologize to the board for all the errors that were found here in this report. First off, this is my first official board meeting. However, this is no reflection on my colleagues. Um, I just want to say that um, this has been a learning curve for me, and I don't want this to reflect no way on our staff members because they are very professional in what they say and what they do. Thank you. I think that's a first, <laughs> but uh, the, but you know mistakes happen, um, and you will get better. Thank you for all your you do. All right, uh, seeing that there's no more public comment, this meeting is adjourned.